Hello, uh, so today we'll talk about how we can uh, do the Python programming with the help of AI. Uh, so now there are two popular uh, services available that can let AI help us to do the Python programming. The first most popular one is uh, GitHub Code Pilot, which uses Open API. Uh, so essentially, which means that so when you type the Python code, uh, the AI will read your Python code and also even from your comments. And then they will help you to uh, finish the remaining code so that can reduce the time of your Python coding part. Uh, so GitHub Code Pilot uh, right now supports uh, those editors like VS, VS Code, uh, JetBrains, etc. Uh, another alternative service is from AWS, which is called Amazon Code Whisper. Uh, especially if you are using a lot of AWS services, um, and also it, uh, Whisper is a, a machine learning powered uh, coding service uh, which supports uh, JetBeans, um, VS Code, and also Cloud9. So today we all use um, Code Whisper as an example to demonstrate that how we can use AI and help us coding. And essentially, I think both services provide. Uh, the pretty much are similar functions. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, Cloud9. So uh, I just go ahead and I'll create a Cloud9 online and Python code editor. Uh, so I'll call it code AI demo. And then I just simply accept the default settings and then uh, hit create. So it will create um, a cloud-based code editor uh, which support most uh, programming languages like Java, C, uh, Python, etc. And also the benefit of Cloud9 is that uh, you can use your browser to do the Python coding. You don't need to install any like interpreters or other editors on your local computer. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and also open uh, Cloud9 and so just wait until uh, it's finished, and then we'll start to uh, activate um, the code whisper. Okay, and so once Cloud9 is ready, and you can go and head open the AWS, AWS Explore, and then to, to enable the code whisper, enable that function. Okay, so here it is, is how it looks like. So you open the AWS. And then you can see that uh, Code Whisper is in the preview, I guess. So if this and um, this is your first time uh, to use Code Whisper, you need to double click and to enable Code Whisper. So uh, it will show the terms of the service. And then if you're OK with that one and you accept and now you're able to run it. OK, uh, so before we start, um, I also want to download uh, some source code that we will use uh, for this uh, demo. So we will use this CSV file, and we will also use uh, this image. So I'm going to go, go to my GitHub repository and copy this uh, repository, and then go to it, uh, AWS Cloud9, and I want to copy this, download this repository to my local file. And now you can see those file has been downloaded. And now let's just go ahead and let's create a new uh, py file, let's say demo uh, dot py. All right, uh, so, and also we make sure that code whisper is enabled. Uh, we also have the auto suggestions that uh, enabled. So let's say we want to see uh, a very simple one. So let's say um, a comment that iterate items in a list where we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so the four numbers. And now you can see, uh, now this line, we have this uh, first suggestion that is from the code whisper. So that is print items. Um, and let's see. Okay, so we have this list which created. And then for this, uh, use a for loop. And then we print the i. Um, and now if I use run this result, and we can see, yeah, it's a pretty good uh, 
code that worked. Uh, let's try uh, another a little bit complicated one. So let's say that we want use a for loop to find the I cannot spell right uh, maximal item in this list. Uh, so in this list, I just gave it a bunch of random numbers. Uh, so this also is a question that I assigned to my student who now is taking my uh, Python class. Um, so see if you can use a for loop to find out the maximum item in this list. And now I hit enter and let's see what are the solutions that Code Whisper can provide. Okay, so pr print the maximum item. And so first we have this list. So now I just continue, hit enter, so the maximum item is zero, which means that that is a placeholder, and I guess. And then for the i in that list, we see if i is greater than maximal, and we are changing the value to the current i, and, and finally print the maximum values. Okay, I think that's a solution for the code whisper. So, uh, which is okay, although there are several issues. So first, uh, we don't need indentation for the last line. So if you want to print the maximum items, this should be outside of this for loop. Uh, so now if I write, uh, we can, yes, it does give us the maximum items in that list. Uh, however, so this is not the best solution. So for a few reasons, uh, number one, uh, we do not use list and max as uh, variable names. Uh, and also same thing here. Uh, because those are the uh, keyword that in Python. Uh, secondly, especially for the second solution, so what if my value contains negative values, or what if all my values are negative values? So if you give the default value as zero, so this mean, may have some issues if all my values in the list are negative. But we can see that it's still pretty good. Uh, so uh, they are able to finish a little bit complicated work, which may kind of involve like uh, define uh, uh, um, a very simple algorithm. All right, now let's see if Code, Code Whisper is able to do some data analysis. Uh, let's see that we want say, okay, so use pandas. So pandas is a, a very famous uh, data science Python library to read the file, uh, read a CSV file, and the file is this diamond.csv file. So I'm going to copy that pass and paste it here. And I also need to give it the right position so that it gives dot. And I hit enter. Okay, so the print the first five rows. Okay, go ahead. Okay, import pandas and read the CSV files. That's nice. Uh, and also print the header. Um, and also print the last five. Uh, I don't think we need the last five, so I'm going to delete those files. But we do see that, okay, so it did a great job here. So uh, even though that I don't have pandas that installed on this uh, Cloud9 instance yet, so you can see that they still write the right code. Uh, apparently, they also know the, the syntax of pandas. Okay, so let's go ahead and also install those Python libraries. So uh, I'm going to install pandas. Uh, Matt, Plotlab, and also Scikit-learn uh, for this demo. So you can pause the video here, and also you can install the Python libraries on your own computer as well. So p install pandas, and also say p install uh, Matt, Plotlab, uh, and finally p install uh psyche learn okay so pandas is a uh, uh, for data analysis uh, matplot matplotlab is for data visualization and psyche learn is a very popular machine learning uh, python library all right so now the installation is complete so now i'm going to go ahead and also run this uh, uh, python code and see if that works 
And also, okay, so very nice. And now we can see we did load the CSV file, which is diamond data into Python by using pandas. Uh, we see we have the price column, we have the raters column, and also we have the weight column. So those are the information uh, that in this uh, CSV file. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and also comment out uh, those previous lines. Okay, uh, so now we have loaded uh, the, the diamonds.csv file by using pandas. And let's see if we can do some mm, calculations. Let's say we want to calculate the average price of diamonds. And we, will, we also want to see per rater or group by rater. Okay, let's see what will happen. Uh, it will print group by and also price dot mean. Uh, actually, I'm not sure that will work. Um, okay, nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know that is a lot. Okay, so that is that column dot. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, now let's say we want to visualize the result. So we want to see create a bar chart to show the average price of those diamonds and group by rate. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to start visual visualizations. We need the matplotlab, which is nice. Okay, and now we create this bar chart. And now we're going to show this bar chart. So um, you know what? So if I run it, uh, nothing will be showing up. That is because uh, Cloud9 does not support showing the result So uh, from Matplotlab. So I'm going to go ahead and I also OK and save the bar chart to local disk. Okay. Okay, and let's see if this is a very, very long result. Uh, very, very long line. Okay. Okay, looks like it will save the result and also give it uh, a very, very nice name, average price per rater. And I don't think we need to save that one to S3. So, okay. Uh, let's just go ahead and now run this line. All right, and now we have this uh, chart that is being created. And now if I open it, okay, okay, you can see very nice. So we do have this chart that has been created. And we don't want to save that one to the S3 bucket, uh, but that would be nice. Okay, so that is a simple visualizations and also uh, data analysis. Um, let's go ahead and I'll see if we can do a, a linear regression model. Let's see um, here, use a linear regression model to predict the price of diamonds by weight. Okay, and now you can say start uh, import the scikit-learn uh, because scikit-learn has a lot of regression models, and they are using the linear regression models. Uh, and we don't think we need a trim test split. Uh, and also they also import a mean square error so to test the uh, the model performance, I guess, and also import NumPy. Okay, and nice. So x variable equals weight, and y variable equals price. Okay, so now I'm just keeping here to the enters. Um, uh, let's see the line. Okay, so they also did a split test, which is great. <laughs> and so, so we are using uh, twenty percent for the testing and also eight percent for the training. And now we have this regression models. Okay, so we fade 
the training model or the training data. Uh, and also we have this predict. Okay, and we can also print the uh, the the model variables like coefficient. Uh, okay, and also square root. So the which is also based on the uh, test. Okay, we also have the test, uh, the score for the training, and also score for the test. And uh, here they also use the model to predict the price of the diamond if the weight is 10. So, okay, let's just stop here and now let's look at the result. Okay, and now we can see here we have those uh, interceptors coefficient. Uh, we have the mean square errors. Uh, and we can see the R square on the test um, data set uh, and R square on the training data set. Um, and also, if you have a diamond which the weight is 10, and that is the predict value for this diamond. Okay, uh, I think that's uh, really. Uh, okay, okay. Um, that's really amazing. So I'm kind of impressed by this model. Okay, so um, by Code Whisper. Okay, so that's the simple machine learning. Um, I think another benefit of using Code Whisper in AWS is that so sometimes if you are using uh, the tools on AWS, that will be super, super easy that to call those APIs, to call those services in Cloud9 and by using code base uh, whisper. So let's say here, let's say we are using the uh, AI services on AWS. Uh, let's say we want to use AWS to detect. Let's do a sentiment analysis. Of, uh, here, let's say uh, the word that's I love cat. Okay, and let's see. Can Code Whisper do that? Okay, so import bottle three, which is a, a AWS Python library, um, and now they're using Comprehend. So Comprehend is an AWS service on AWS, uh, on AWS, the the AI service on AWS to do the natural language processing in centers. Um, and now you can say we are print the risk uh, using the sentiment analysis to to detect attacks of I love cat and also print the result. Okay, uh, so I think if we want to run this code, we also need to install the uh, bottle three first. Uh, so once that has been installed and now we're able to run this code. Okay, uh, so the installation is uh, complicated and now let's run it. All right, and now we can see the sentiment is positive, and where we can also see the scores that it is very, very positive. Okay, so that's nice. So I think this is really a great feature that uh, of Cloud9 and also Code Whisper. So especially, um, I'm going to close that one, do not see. Okay, uh, especially uh, uh, you just know the name of those services, but you don't know the exactly the syntax. Uh, you can just call the code whisper and also finish those syntax for you, and then you can call those AR services in Python. Okay, so let's do something uh, that uh, on AWS as well. So let's see here we are going to do a facial recognition. So uh, which is uh, also another AR service on AWS uh, available that is. Uh, uh, to detect the human emotions in the image. So the image that we are going to use is this one. And we are going to detect, okay, what is the emotion that we can detect from this person? And we all know who this person is. Uh, so to do that, let's first, we need to upload this image to our bucket. So let's say create uh, S3 bucket. And name it uh, demo code AI 2023 and upload the image, which is dot 
and here I copy this location uh, to that bucket. Okay, so and we're we're not going to detect that uh, image yet. So, okay, so import bottle three, and we're using S three. So I just keep hit the enter key. So all code are written by the code whisper now. Uh, create that barcode and also upload that image and print that object. Okay, and also print the other stuff. Um, I think that's enough. Uh, I guess if the upload and also creation of the bucket are success, we're able to read load those information. So let's see if that will work. Um, here, yes, looks like we do have that S3 bucket that now created, and also we do have the image that being uploaded to uh, my S3 bucket. Okay, uh, so now let's say we want to use AWS to detect the face emotion on the source.jpg image. And in this bucket, which is here, S3 bucket. Okay, again, we import bottle three. And this time we're using recognition. So recognition is an AR service that can, can analyze images. Um, now the response is, okay. Uh, image in calls. So now everything is written by Code Whisper again. Okay, in that bucket, uh, the name of that image. Okay, and also attribute equals all. Okay, and print response. And print response face details and those emotions. All right, uh, it's nice, but I think they still need to work on the indentation part. So um, I'm going to manually uh, change the indentation here. And now let me write. And okay, so if you look at here, uh, <laughs> that's very interesting. So um, Let's see what is the response. Uh, let's just ignore the response. Let's just look at the emotion. Okay, and I guess uh, the emotion is calm and we are almost 100% confident. Uh, it is not less likely to be surprised or fear or sad, etc. So, right, I think that's pretty. Uh, accurate. So you can see here we have image, and now we can use uh, the AR services on AWS like recognition to do some image analysis. All right, I think that's pretty much uh, the demo of how we can use AI to help us to to do coding in Python. Uh, we can do simple uh, for loop. We can do a very simple algorithm like identify the maximum item use a for loop. Uh, we can also use a modern uh, Python libraries like Pandas, uh, Matplotlib to visualize, analyze data. We can also use Scikit-learn to do very simple machine learning. Uh, we can also call the AR services on AWS. So for example, we can do the sentimental analysis on the text message. We can also do facial recognitions uh, on image. Uh, so finally, let's say we want okay delete the source.jpg image. And delete the bucket. So let's see if we can do that as well. Okay, delete that source image and delete that bucket. Okay, uh, I don't think we need to print that one more time. Okay, so let's uh, run that 
last time. Okay, and now I think we are able to, we have deleted all those stuff. So I don't need to manually delete those image and I'll spark it after this demo.